My name is Dave Hollenbach, the host of From Embers to Excellence. My goal is to explore the many facets of leadership from the perspectives of some amazing people. In addition to leadership, I like to discuss mental health, PTSD, and overcoming adversity. If you have a favorite episode, I would love to hear about it. Message me through social media or my website, and I will share some free tools to help you achieve your goals. Please like, subscribe, and leave a review. If you haven't purchased your copy of my book, Fireproof, please grab a copy today. Thanks for listening. Today, I'm speaking with Morgana Ray. She is the international number one best-selling author of Financial Alchemy, 12 Months of Magic and Manifestation. She is regarded to be the world's number one authority on transforming your relationship with money. She has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Yahoo Finance, all the major television networks, Coast to Coast Radio, and she was a recurring money maven on Fox TV. Um, this has been something that I've been really excited about, being able to, to speak with Morgana. Uh, her book... Uh, Financial Alchemy was one of the books that I um, was introduced to in a coaching program uh, that I was in to get a coaching certification. So um, this is going to be awesome. So welcome, Morgana. Ha how are you today? I'm doing terrific. And I'm so happy to be here with you and to get to meet you. I'd like to dig in where it all began. Uh, where were you born and raised? And, and what was life like for you growing up? Mm -hmm. Well, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, at the base of the Hollywood Hills. And it was a very idealistic time, late 60s, early 70s. So I'm really old, if anybody wants to know. Yeah, I was just, I was raised by parents who were really into civil rights, grandparents, great grandparents who were really into social causes. So I've always had that sort of priority around me. And there was also a lot of money drama. Oh my God, can you believe it? Um, and that instilled in me without my conscious awareness at a young age that money got in the way of love. And I'm to this day, the kind of person who chooses people, you know, people I, I, I will choose people and the welfare of people over an abstract concept. And that showed up in my life decades later in my own inability to honestly, in the most humiliating basic terms, make a freaking living like straight A student, National Merit Scholar, even after a traumatic brain injury and a coma and all, all that, you know, just all that, homeless, couldn't sleep for a year, and I still got good grades, and not easily, but I'm the kind of person, like so many of you are, who, you know, you just you get through the heart, you do the hard stuff and you just keep applying yourself and applying yourself and applying yourself. And sometimes you do all the right stuff and you work really, really hard and you don't see the results. You don't see the results that you should be getting, that you were promised, that, that it, it doesn't make sense. And by the way, one of the things out of the car accident, we're going way off on a tangent here, is it broke my brain for a bunch of years. So I had easier good grades than I realized until after the head injury. And it was a real humiliating wake up call to see what an advantage I had before the accident and and a lot of my judginess at people who were not getting as good grades i didn't realize how easy my brain worked until it didn't work anymore so very 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 slowly i recovered from that got good enough grades to go to college graduate go through my life become a coach get like a dozen sort of coaching certifications did all the marketing and sales and and i had like mountains of testimonials and many of them from Hollywood celebrities and get this 
And I was still struggling to make $100 a month as a coach. Beat that. Beat that. No, don't. But I'm just putting it out there for anybody who has ever been in that agonizing experience in life, whether it's making money, having a viable business, finding your soulmate, one of my clients getting pregnant, getting over a disease, whatever that thing is. If you're the person who you've just been doing it, like everything you're supposed to be doing on and on and on, and your results don't make sense and it doesn't feel fair. It is my experience because I've literally, I think I'm heading into my 29th year now as a coach. So I have coached thousands of people. I'm really well known on the money piece, but money is just a pain door. And it, uh, it's not the only one. Uh, it has been my experience coaching thousands of people and, and impacting tens of thousands of people that when you're in that situation, there's a very high likelihood that if we were to dig a little we would find that you are actually protecting yourself from the very thing you're pursuing, even if it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't have to make sense. The subconscious has its own rules. So money, we need it to survive. Health, we need it. Love, we need it. And why would we protect ourselves from something that we need? There are always good reasons. You are not a loser. You are not a failure. And by the way, I'm like, I failed. I was so good at like every marketing class, every sales class. I had beautiful vision boards. Um, you know, I did all the stuff I was supposed to do like a good little student. And I was still making, and oh, you know, the testimonials, the public speaking, blah, 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 blah. And I was still making $100 a month. So when you're in that situation where you aren't getting the results that you desire and deserve, it is my experience that you are probably protecting yourself and you are right to protect yourself. The stuff you are protecting yourself from is real and dangerous and painful. And what we need to do is make what you want safe. When we make what you want safe and you no longer have to protect yourself from it, and protection is 24 seven unconscious, you are not aware you're doing it. When you're no longer at war with yourself and you're no longer preventing yourself from what you want and you can actually have what you want safely, it's amazing how dramatically things can change really quickly. I originally, and what I'll you know be going through with you today, the my signature financial alchemy process with money, and I'm putting air quotes around that for anybody who's not seeing but listening. Uh, yes, like really dramatic financial results, clients making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars, sometimes within hours. It's kind of mind blowing, but real. And I've got documentation and I invite you to just totally like check up on me. Um, but honestly, I did the same process for myself 10 years later on my relationship with love, 45 never married, ever, 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 not for lack of trying. I chased Brian Patterson under the piano on his fifth birthday. And Brian was the older man. And he <laughs> remembers this. I did this process on my relationship with love in 2012. When I was 45, I met my husband two months later. Wow. So, and, and we've been married at the time of this conversation, 26 times in 21 countries, heading towards 100 times in 100 countries, his idea. So um, as I said, when you make that thing safe, it is really fun and interesting to me to observe uh, what is possible that on the other side that you never even imagined. So I grew up in LA. <laughs> I grew up with a lot of drama around money and love and parents who did the best they could. I had my traumatic brain injury and I always had an obsession with, 
I would say three primary questions from a very, very young age, which is what is it to be human? What is the nature of the universe we live in? And how do we have the best experience while we're here? And that took me to get a degree in religion from Smith College and then pursue an acting career. And then finally, I found my happy place, which is just coaching and helping people because it's really all about relationship with self and life. You bring up traumatic brain injury and you know a, a lot of the audience are veterans and first responders and um, traumatic brain injuries are very, very common. Um, I've had a couple. I don't but. recommend it. <laughs> um, it is so much harder and slower than anyone will ever tell you. And you look fine. So people think you should be fine. It's, it's really hard to have an invisible disability. I know all of you know what I'm talking about. How did you repair your relationship with money or create a better relationship with money? Let's put it that way. I'm going to tie the whole brain injury and the money thing together for a second. Because what I believe experientially from my own life and from coaching so many people, and I see the same thing every single time which is at the, the deepest level, our relationship with money is really our relationship with life. And the core issues behind our relationship with money have nothing to do with money, but they show up in money. So yeah, there are tons and tons of coaches and people who will say, change your money story, change your life. If that works for you, go for it. it I've never seen it work. It's like changing your Band-Aid. Well, it's, you know, not a bad thing to do, but the, but it's the stuff underneath the band-aid that really the, the poison that needs to be sucked out. Um, decades ago, I had a cat who was frightened and bit me and not knowing better, I put a band-aid on it. And within an hour, I had this black line going up my arm and I was losing feeling. And I went to the emergency room where I found out that if I had not come to the emergency room, it would have killed me mm. because, the, because I put the Band-Aid on, the poison turned inward. So what we need to do is we need to find out what the poison is and so that we can suck it out. So in my experience, all money drama whether you are on public assistance or a billionaire, because I have coached the extremes on both sides. And the circumstances look very different, but the humanity underneath is identical. It's not different. And it's wounds, pains, issues around love, worth, safety, and power. So, Every, everything about not being lovable, not being valued, not being safe. Is the world a safe place? And feeling powerless, any of those things are going to show up in your relationship with money. Whether you don't have it or whether you have it and you're afraid of losing it, or it's making you a target, or it's getting in the way of the quality of your relationships. So. For me, I didn't know this initially. I kind of <laughs> learned this after I had my own uh, accidental transformation back in 2003. And then, want, and then had all these clients come in, paying clients now. And, and I had to reverse engineer it and find out exactly what needed to happen for it to work for them. Like it worked for me, only it work, ended up working for them like way beyond anything I ever imagined. So. I was in a really, really dark place. I had been doing everything I was supposed to be doing for years. I had the marketing, I had the website, I had the brochures and the business cards and the taglines and the public speaking and the testimonials. 
And I kept get, just getting one more certification after another, after another, after another, thinking that, oh, if I can do this, then I can make money. If I can do this, I can make money. It didn't matter. It wasn't, they're totally, totally different animals. And I had just taken a class on overcoming sales objections, learning the magic words to say when somebody says, oh, I would love to, but I can't afford it, or I don't have the time or blah, blah, blah. And that was like my Hail Mary. That was it. That was going to finally solve the problem. And I took the class and I was a good student and I totally used the scripts and seven people in a row, I overcame their objections and they said yes to hiring me. And seven people in a row never showed up for their first coaching call and never paid me a dime. Mm. And that was like, that's when I lost it. That was, I lost the last little thread of hope that I was hanging on to, that I could be a grown up, that I could make a living, that I was wanted in this world. And I just kind of lost my mind when that last person stood me up. And I remember being in my little teeny tiny bedroom of my little teeny tiny apartment that I couldn't afford in Los Angeles. And the disappointment and the despair and the rage just like punched me in the gut. And I remember pulling closed the blackout curtains to crypt out my bedroom and just getting on my bed and screaming, screaming and wailing and crying my heart out. And I felt hated and rejected by the universe. Like it was mean and sadistic and it just been messing with me and I didn't like the universe back and I really just didn't want to stick around anymore what's the point and I just cried and raged and cried and raged until I had nothing left sort of like sinking to the bottom of the swimming pool and the great thing about there is you have nowhere to lower to go and when I was down there and all cried out, I had these two thoughts. And one was maybe money needed to be my next area of spiritual growth. That's kind of a cheat because I'm from LA and spirituality is really easy for us. And I thought, well, maybe if I hide money in the spirit box, I could deal with it. And the other thought that I had was, what is going on inside of me that can't be with money? Because it didn't make sense. I like to spend it like anybody else. I want to be a grown up. I want to make a living. I want to help the world. I want to pay my rent. What is going on? And from this place of like total deep despair, and curiosity, I had a call with my coach the next day. Get this, no money for rent, but I still had a coach, which is crazy, but it also saved my life. And I had been working with this coach for months and months. We actually had graduated and got certified on the same day. So he was a peer, except he was making a living and I wasn't, so I hired him. And I tried everything he gave me to do week after week after week and nothing worked, not his fault. Because you can do everything and not get the result. But on this day, when I showed up completely furious, dejected, despair, he asked me just the weirdest ass question out of left field that I'd never heard before. And it totally changed my life. He said to me, if your money was a person, who would your money be? And instantly I saw a guy. I don't know who the guy was, but in my mind's eye, I saw this big, scary, dirty, violent biker dude who had it in for me, was like really dangerous. And he was bald and had like long sideburns and the white beater shirt and the jeans and the tattoos and whatever, who cares? It wasn't what he looked like. It was that there was just something so dangerous and malevolent about him that I could feel my whole body coil back. And I instantly had this 
vision of being at a live event with him and having my eye on him constantly to create maximum distance. And that was my light bulb moment. The first time in my life, everything made sense because it didn't matter what I did. Didn't matter how hard I worked or how well I did everything I was supposed to do. Did not matter. Because every cell in my being knew that money was a bad guy who was going to kill me and everything I loved and was working 24-7 just to create distance at the same time that I was trying so hard to have it in my life. And I took one look at him and I was like, whoa, there is no way that I can have money in my life if it's this dude. So we had to end the relationship. And I'll I'll go a little deeper into that later. At the time, it was just like, I'm not happy. He's not happy. We're going to break up. That's not what I recommend now. Like <laughs> I've tested this on a lot of people and that's not what I recommend now. But at the time, it worked well enough. So I got rid of him. And am I allowed to curse on this show? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank fucking God. Um, <laughs> I've been like controlling myself so carefully. So by the way, this is a recurring theme in my life. It's like, yay. Oh, fuck. So I got rid of the monster. Yay. Oh, fuck. Now I have no relationship with money at all. And I live in Los Angeles and that's going to last me five seconds. So as soon as I had gotten rid of the biker, what I now call the money monster of that moment, uh, I had the most surprising experience of, whoa, I felt the emptiness. Be, I didn't know, I never really noticed that their relationship was there, but the moment it was gone, it was like being in a void. And because I'd merely broken up with the biker, I knew, oh, wow, I need to replace, I need to replace him really fast before he comes back because there was this empty space and I didn't want him or some rando monster from Sunset Boulevard, like, you know, jumping in to, to become a new monster. And I, and I didn't want a relationship like that before. If you've ever, ever, ever had a relation, like a romantic relationship with somebody who just always told you that this is the best you're ever going to get, and you're not good enough. And, and it just, and just sort of crushes your soul and makes you feel inadequate. That's what this one was like. And I didn't want that again. I was at that stage in the relationship where, you know, I as a girl would go off and chop off all my hair into a really bad haircut, which I've done. Uh, <laughs> so I realized that I needed to replace my relationship with money immediately. And I didn't want anything like it was before. Honestly, I didn't want a relationship with money at all because the only relationship I had ever known had all sorts of baggage with bad things being done in the world, groups of people being massacred, pollution, abuse, just bad stuff that I didn't want to be part of. Not to mention family drama and, you know, family members not speaking to each other and bad mouthing each other. And I just, I wanted to be the nice person and I wanted to be loved. And money wasn't part of that. And so I, I didn't want that. So I remember thinking to myself, okay, so who could I want in my life so much that I'd be willing to have a relationship with this person, even if it's money? And because honestly, and I'll, I'll walk you through the steps because I'm kind of like, surreptitiously guiding you through the steps through my story, but I'll actually name them later. But because the pain and the despair had been like so big, and then the monster guy doesn't have to be a guy, mine was, uh, felt so real and human, not like, you know, we could talk about negative beliefs about money for 30 years. And so what? It's interesting, but it's not real like a person. And I got rid of the person, really, really got rid of him and could feel him completely gone. When I asked myself, well, who could I want? The opposite. The new person showed up just as easily and spontaneously as the monster did. 
Only this time, the new person who showed up was because I'm a ridiculous romantic fool. Remember, I was telling you about Brian Patterson when I was four and a half. So I asked myself this question and this, oh my gosh, this tall, dark, handsome, cutie, clean cut, wearing a tuxedo, holding a bouquet of red flowers just instantly showed up in love. So mine was a guy because that's my flavor. Um, and the biggest takeaway from that moment was, oh my God, he loves me and he's safe. Like I can trust him. He's good. And I've been breaking his heart for years. This vulnerability, somebody who loves me and wants to be with me that I've been pushing away. And that was my new relationship with money, who I totally wanted. And that created a new problem. Every solution creates the problem that leads to the next step, the next layer of your evolution, yay, which was, oh my gosh, he wants to be with me. And I have no clue in the world how to allow money to be with me. I am like Olympic level muscles on pushing money away. Like if, if I were a superhero, I'd have like this giant R on my chest for money repulsion. And so I, I need, I just really wasn't wired to allow money to be with me. So the fun thing about when money is a person and feels and looks real uh, is you can ask a question and you can get an answer and you can get a really good answer that doesn't have any of your own neuroses or baggage or nonsense attached. So I asked him, okay, what do you need from me so you can be with me? which by the way, is a very different question than what do, you, what do you need from me so you can love me? And I bring this up because somewhere on YouTube is this really, really sweet girl who likes my work, who shot a video about my work and got it completely wrong. And who am I to tell a fan, you are wrong, stop it, I'm not gonna do that. But she got it all wrong. And she thought the question was, what do you need from me so you can love me? Love is unconditional. Presence is conditional. So I asked my money, honey, what he needed from me. And in that first conversation, his answer was, I need you to love me. And I need you to stop treating me like a monster. And I could feel the pain in his heart. And I have this huge awareness that, oh my goodness, I have the body. I'm the gatekeeper. I have the power in this relationship, which is how you tell the difference between a money monster relationship and a money honey relationship. In a money honey relationship, you always have the power. So we are not creating some law of attraction fairy where you sit on a couch and you think positive thoughts and your money honey fairy will just go off into the world and do your work for you and shower you with jewels If that works for you, do it. Always, always, always do it. Works for you. But that to me is just um, another disempowering money monster paradigm. And that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for you to be your fully powerful self who you are when we take away all the false stuff and all the circumstances and all the like secondhand clothing you've acquired that hides you from your power. Step number five was I had a conversation with my money, honey. He told me he needed me to love him and stop treating him like a monster because it was breaking his heart. And I was like, ooh, wow. I like read it. Who's the asshole? I was the asshole in the relationship. <laughs> so I didn't want to do that anymore. So uh, we took a look at, okay, so how do I stop pushing you away? And so I was thinking about, well, how does he usually bring me gifts? Like he likes to give me presents by bringing me people who want to hire me. And it's all good and fun until they ask me the, that terrifying question, what do you charge? Or the euphemism that I never recognized that they were just asking me, what do you charge when they say, how do you work? And I would explain it, like how I make the sausage and all this nonsense when they just wanted a price. So we had a conversation. So what, what does that look like to not push you away? And so we agreed that next time he brought me a gift, which would look like somebody who wanted to hire me, instead of freaking out, 
when they wanted to know my fee as if I was like hiding some big, stinky, terrifying pile of monster. Uh, I would respond instead with love, with the kind of energy, this is my fee and isn't he gorgeous? And the funny haha -ha punchline is that within 24 hours, four people reached out to me and hired me for double what I'd ever charged before. And it wasn't easy for me because the first time somebody asked me what I charged and everything in my throat and neurology wanted to talk them out of the sale. And it was so weird to observe that in myself because I had never been conscious that I did that before, but I could feel all of my discomfort well to the surface, but I had made a promise. I had made a promise to my cute money, honey, sweetheart, dude, that I was going to say thank you when he brought me a gift. So I did the hardest thing in my life, which was I bit my tongue and I sat on my hands and I shut the fuck up. And then I did it again with the next person. And then I started to get a little better at it with the third person. And then by the fourth person was, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> when, when they get all weird, spooky, silent on the other side, that just means they're figuring out where to come up with the money. It's a good thing. You don't have to keep talking. And after that, clients just kept coming and coming. And I've literally made millions of dollars since then. And even more phenomenally is I've kept millions of dollars. So. And I work with fewer people, but people that I love more and more and more. And in 2023, I'm going to be shifting and doing this international collaboration called Million Quest with a team of six other coaches. And the game of Million Quest is to positively impact one million sentient beings. So, you know, I just follow in partnership uh, where I'm led. And when I have a relationship with money that shares my values and wants to save the world, which is real, that's like a, you know, a has to be. If, 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 if this relationship with money doesn't love me, doesn't share my values, doesn't want to save the world with me, it's not a relationship worth having. So if, if my imaginary money guy gets excited and we're both on the same wavelength about what we want to do and see and the effect that we want to have, then, then things show up and interesting things happen. And sometimes uh, I may not feel like doing it, which is another fun conversation, which, and, and I've had those moments of conversation where he says to me, look, you said, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to keep your word. And then I do it. And then I'm shocked at what happens that I never saw coming on the other side, the positive things. So by the way, you can totally, and I'm totally rambling here. Um, I'm not a long, I'm not a scripted linear speaker, but you actually can have arguments like drag out, fuck you arguments with your money, honey. Um, mine will just laugh, which makes me even more <laughs> angry. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm like done cursing him out, then we can have a conversation and I can be a good relationship partner again and learn whatever that thing is that I need to learn for the next level of my evolution and empowerment. Any comments or questions? I want to do this process with you. Like, I don't even know how I would describe uh, my relationship with money right now. Like who my, per I, I'm thinking of like a really scary woman. You know, that's robbing me blind. Okay, so 
we can we can try to do the process here um let me tell you what the six steps are and let's and let me warn you before we try that like okay. i'm i'm game but so the first step is uncovering the root cause that is really really personal so there are things that you may not want to share on your show okay. um and by the way you don't have to all you have to do is know it um the the actual details uh aren't really what's important and again i'm i'm really big on safety i think change happens at the speed of safety that's why this works uh but the root cause is before the robbing you blind which by the way is a really powerful and fantastic image already but the root cause is always going to be in whatever has made you feel unloved or unlovable so we're talking the deepest wounds that a human person can have anything that has ever made you feel unworthy or worthless or not valued again deepest wounds that a human can have uh anything that ever made you feel unsafe or feel like the world is not a safe place that wants you anything that has ever made you feel powerless like whatever you do doesn't matter those are those are the four things the four areas that i look at to find the root cause we can start with a money story or circumstance but I've never, ever found the monster there. The monster is always what money represents, which is love, worth, safety, and power. So if anything is coming up for you right now, which is really painful, we want to use that. It's almost like in step number one, it's almost like building a fucking case against life, like being an attorney against God saying, you fucked up, you fucked me over. That's step number one. Yeah, I got it. Good. Now we're going to imagine that there is some totally evil, sadistic being person who has orchestrated all of it just to fuck with you how big would this person be you mean like height wise physically like just magnitude i want to get a sense of like how big is it her i think you said her how big is she powerful is she yeah same size as me uh-huh how six, powerful is she? six foot strong yeah strong uh, very manipulative uh, i and i want to make her like as powerful as the world because yeah. she look at all that she's been able to do to you mm -hmm. and what you love and value and care about and all the people you care about so she's really powerful she's got her fingers in everything what is the meanest thing you have ever, and you don't have to say it, but just think of the meanest thing you've ever said to yourself about yourself. And I want you to put it into her mouth as if she has whispered that to you in your own voice to trick you and fuck with you. To make you not want to live. And I want you to feel how she feels about you and how she wants to harm you. What she thinks to herself about you. What she wants to do to you and those you love. If she had a smell, what would she smell like? Pet urine and mothballs. Fabulous. Ick, right? Only one of you gets to survive. Can you get how she she will kill you hmm. if she's if if she's not stopped? Yeah. 
That is the absolute natural outcome of her existence. That's why she exists. Only one of you gets to survive. You have to choose who survives. So step number three is annihilate your money monster by any means necessary. You can use any tool you can imagine. And you must destroy her completely. Leave no bloody bits, no energetic trace. Let me know when, she, when you've killed her. All right. So I want you to check, is there any trace of her left? If there is, that's okay. We can deal with that. I just need to know. Is she gone? Yeah, she's okay. gone. Okay, so what does it feel like to be without her for the first time in your life? A little guilty. Interesting. Tell me about that. I mean, I just ended somebody. Okay, so want to back up just a little bit. Everything that is wrong in the world, everything that you never, ever, ever want to have in your life experience moving forward was put into her. You say yes to yourself and all that you love by destroying her. I want you to put that guilt into like a little remnant of a monster. It's like, a monster scam to hold on. And by destroying her and blowing up that guilt or whatever you do to it, you are staking a claim to get all Monty Python about it. It's like, thou shalt not pass. And you are rejecting everything that you do not want to carry forward in your life experience. So there is a very sacred warrior quality to this moment of slaying the terrorist. Yeah, no, I mean, that just gave me chills right there, like in a good way. Good. So let me know when she's completely gone. Gone. How does that feel? Fucking awesome. <laughs> good <laughs> all right are you ready for the fun part yeah okay so where would you like to meet your money honey your new relationship with money pick a place anywhere in the world a fun first meeting place the amalfi coast Ooh, good one all right so i want you to just imagine yourself being there Hearing the waves and the birds, it just breathing in the air, smelling what it smells like, feeling the ground beneath your feet and the sunlight on you and maybe the wind against your skin and just be there. And when you feel fully there, imagine your new relationship with money your money honey who loves you and is worthy of your deepest trust and admiration is walking towards you and describe this person to me what does the person feel like kind and generous and understanding is this a he or a she or a they it's a, a she. Uh-huh. What does she smell like? It's just that kind of fresh ocean kind of almost because I was kind of imagining the, the smell of flowers and stuff and the breeze there on the mm -hmm. coast and and so it's that smell. Okay. I want you to let her step into your arms so you can hold her. And how does she feel about being held by you? I can feel that she feels safe. 
and and comfortable and warm and loving. Yeah. You slayed the monster for her. So how does she feel about you? She she adores me. Yeah. Does it feel like she wants to stay with you and be with you? Yeah. Do you want to keep her? Yeah. So what Absolutely. does she need from you to allow her to be with you to the full extent she wants to be with you? I need to be able to trust her. And she needs to be able to trust me. Mm. That I won't push her away. What does that do to her when you push her away? It uh, hurts her emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hurt her emotionally? No. No. Okay, so what is one concrete measurable action that you can take to show her that you trust her and that you are safe to trust, that she can trust you too. First thing that comes to mind is that when she shows up, I welcome her with open arms. Mm. How does that make her feel? Loved. Mm. That's so important. I also want you to initiate some kind of action and it doesn't have to look like it's financial. We're gonna, we're, you can just throw ideas to her and she'll let you know. She'll be like, eh, or okay, nice, but, or yeah. And she just lights up. So some there, it's, it's kind of a principle of magic. This is where, you know, we take all this like, Theoric inner work, and we give it flesh and bring it out into reality. So that's why the action piece, the final step, step number six, action is magical. I want you to actually commit to doing something by when it doesn't matter what it is, but just throw out ideas to her right now. You don't have to verbalize them, but I just want us to lock down something that you're going to do, and then you're going to do it because that. Keeping your word is golden for letting you know that you're trustworthy. And that is so good for the relationship between you two. Can you clarify that a little bit? Like what, what kind of action okay. are we talking about? So I will give some examples. I did a demo like 15 years ago with, um, a client named Katie who lived in Canada in December, you know, where it gets cold. They tell me I live in Los Angeles, so I can only take their word for it. And her money, honey, wanted her to go skating with her son. And the funny thing about Katie was Katie was so anxious about her money. And we came up with the monster and it was terrible. And she slayed it and she had this great money, honey. And she made this commitment to go skating. And then the next day she didn't because she was so busy trying to make money that she didn't keep her word and nothing changed. And day number two, she knew she had made this commitment, but she was being responsible, blah, 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 blah. And she didn't do it. Nothing changed. Day number three, she actually went skating with her son, who I think was 10 years old at the time. They had this deep, beautiful heart connection, had fun, came home and she received a phone call and $10,000 without even asking for it. Uh, Janet Breitmeyer, very similar situation. Her money, honey, wanted her to take a walk for a solid week. She was too busy trying to make money to take a walk. She finally took a walk and she picked up, I think, two clients at the, you know, at a higher price than she'd ever charged before. So it can, I had a client, uh, this by the way, was my first six figure like manifestation story was I think back around 2007 
a guy whose money honey showed up as an elegant French woman who wanted him to take his son to Paris. And she said to him, I want you to stop wasting me on stuff that doesn't matter and invest me on something that really does, like take your son to Paris. And he did that and he made $1.5 million within a matter of weeks. Interesting coincidence. So this is a very personal thing between you and your money, honey. It could be calling people who owe you money or balancing your checkbook or filing your taxes, or it could be go take a salsa class. Only you and your money, honey, will know. And then the point is to do it. Do something that I could call you up next week on Thursday and say, did you do it? And you could tell me whether you did or you didn't. Because what your money, honey, asks for, which is trust, is all well and good. Great aspirational goal. And you may not be able to succeed at that every moment of every day of, for the rest of your life, right? Mm -hmm. You'll have good days. You'll have holy shit days before you rega regain balance. And holy shit days are very useful for your money, honey, to get your attention. But what you can do is you can do a thing and then you have a win and you did it and you know you did it and your money, honey, knows you did it and it brings you closer together and there's sort of a magic to it. And I never know what's gonna happen, but it's you are you are creating, establishing a relationship, a way of communicating with each other and staying in relationship and being in integrity and valuing each other that you want to carry forward with you for the rest of your life. And it will ripple out into every other re relationship in your life because whenever you disrespect yourself or devalue yourself or let people disrespect yourself, it's going to break her heart. It's dynamic. Like I think I mentioned my husband. I think I mentioned we've been married 26 times and counting. And part of that is because you can't just say, I love you and then be good to go for the rest of eternity. You know, you need to keep checking in and exchanging affection and, and seeing what, what your partner needs. And spoiler alert, what your money, honey, will need over and over and over again is your happiness. Not that you're happy all the time, but she's always going to need you to do things that value you, that serve high quality love in your life, high quality lifestyle high quality legacy, because that is honestly the only reason for money to exist, is to serve love, lifestyle, and legacy. When money starts to serve other things, that's when things get fucked up. And the only way to save the world is to start with you individually. And then you have a ripple effect on everybody who comes into your sphere. That's why I do these podcasts, because this passes from you, but everybody listening and watching is having their own vicarious experience. And everybody that you relate to moving forward gets to benefit from your being more even than you're doing. So I want you to be loved and be valued and be powerful and feel like you belong here. Yeah, this has been incredible. I I did not expect this. This has been amazing. <laughs> uh, man. And let me just say that that getting married in different countries what a brilliant idea oh my god i married a genius <laughs> steal it 
Oh, no, absolutely. I'm engaged right now. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to share that with her tonight because that's what we got to do. And we never had the big expensive wedding. My choice. I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of pressure for a baby marriage. We have to protect the baby marriage. And I, and I just thought we'll have uh, an elopement and, you know, bucket list complete happily married, done. And I did not expect any of the following weddings. Um, and some of them have been these big surprise, like super ornate events where people just come to our country, we'll throw you a wedding. And we're like, okay. Um, and some of them are like, hey, you behind the desk, can you read this and marry us? Um, in the best semblance of English you can manage, great. Uh, because at the end of the day, oh, oh, and in Serbia, oh my God, Serbia, we were having a double wedding with a big Eastern European pop star. And that wedding really uh, went down in a weird way really fast. And, and people, and, and the wedding party, nobody that we knew literally they were booing when my husband was saying his vows and his vows were gorgeous because every time we just make up new stuff but he was saying poetic stuff about a man has two faces one face that he shares with the world and one face that he only shares with the woman he loves and I'm like eating it up and these people are booing at our wedding and I had this moment of like lightning clarity that it didn't matter because I wasn't going home with them I was going home with my husband Devin and he was the prize which takes a lot of pressure off of weddings when you realize that it's not about I think I think that getting married is is way more important and precious and valuable than I ever imagined I didn't think it would change anything but it really did it just made everything sweeter um sure I have moments where I want to kill him and he won't, you know uh, because we're human but you know we make up but it it's it is different and you know for anybody going out there and getting married only once which is like going to Vegas good luck um pouring all that like onto one day um which is something I wanted to do when I was younger. But by the time I got married for the first time, I was 47. I was like, ah, that's so much trouble. <laughs> Cause it's all me. I can't put it off on my parents. Um, <laughs> just understanding that the real prize is the person you love. And, and all that maybe really matters in the wedding is the vows you say to each other. And by the way, if you don't, if you don't like knock it out of the park the first time, go just exchange vows again until you do. It feels deeper every time because the longer you're married, the more you really know the person and you're marrying them anyway. And that's, <laughs> that's really cool. That's awesome. So by all means, Go get married over and over and over again. I think it's a great practice. No, that's phenomenal. I'm definitely stealing it. So, <laughs> yeah, tell yeah. her it's your idea. Go ahead. <laughs> well, she'll she'll hear this. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell her all about it tonight. So this has been such a great conversation. <laughs> um, for those listening, that want to learn more about you that you know just listen to this and they want to to enlist you enlist your services what's the best way for people to connect with you go to my website is always the easiest it's just my name morgana ray.com like no spaces one word morgana ray.com spelled like it is in the show notes and on the screen um and also in the month of January, depending on when you hear this, I am coming out with the 10 year anniversary special edition of my best selling book, Financial Alchemy, 
which walks you through the steps and then keeps you on track easily with just like a minute a day. Uh, keeps you on track on your relationship with money. Also addresses a lot of what comes up after you've changed your relationship with money that we haven't even touched on today. So uh, that's why I have my book. If you're watching, you can see what I looked like a very long time ago when I had brown hair. Uh, the new cover will be me, older, blonder, fatter, happier. <laughs> and um, that is, I, rec I recommend the book is a really excellent self-coaching system. And I've honestly, one of my paying clients had her first quarter of a million dollar month using the book before she hired me. Um, of course, if you want to hire me, the way to, you know, uh, find out how to work with me and set up a conversation so we can actually discuss it is on my website. But I, I also believe in having lots and lots of resources for anybody wherever you are in your journey. I I think that the more tools that I give you, the easier and faster we can just hit the ground running if we do work together. Uh, so yeah, just go to MorganaRay.com and be sure to uh, go to my website, sign up for the video series or my Money Love, Does Money Love You quiz or anything to just get on my mailing list because I want you to be alerted when my book comes out because this once in a 10 year uh, event means that I'm throwing in tons of extras for the book launch, tons of free gifts, a live Q and A so that when you start the process and then you get stuck, because I know it better than you do. And I don't expect anybody to master this in an hour that I've been doing daily for 20 something years. Um, we have the Q and A so that I can answer questions and do some laser coaching on the fly. So yeah, get the book. And uh, when it becomes available on January 23rd, sign up for my list so that you're alerted to the book launch and find out how to get all the free gifts. And so you can join me on the Q and A call. Awesome. We're gonna thank you so much for, for having this conversation and, and walking me through all the steps is extremely powerful and for those listening maybe watch the the youtube video um i don't know if you can actually hear how moved i was in that experience but maybe you can see it in my face i don't know yeah was, you can <laughs> it was really uh i still have chills from it um and i look forward to seeing how things change because Man, I, it feels phenomenal. Oh, I do have a request of anybody listening or watching is if anything interesting happens, including you, Dave, let me know. That's my kink. I really love to hear it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of From Embers to Excellence. Please visit hollenbachleadership.com for additional content. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review.